I trained uh, in science in, in England at University of Nottingham and then in fact went to the University of Illinois in, in Illinois for two years as a postdoc and that stage was working on rabbits of all things but lactating rabbits and started to do work with hormones which is one of my areas of expertise is endocrinology or hormones. We were working on some hormones where you've got to really measure a blood sample every 10 minutes and if you've ever tried to take blood samples from a rabbit every 10 minutes for say 72 hours you find out they don't have a big enough blood volume. So after, actually after a, a number of beers we decided for my program that we'd work with pigs. So in fact that's how I started working with pigs. It fitted for me as an academic then back in Nottingham to work with pigs. The other guys worked with sheep and cattle and dairy cows and I sort of developed a pig program at Nottingham. And then in 1988, the port board, driven I am sure by Frank Ahern's energy, agreed to work with NSERC, which is the National Science Research Program, to create an Alberta pork chair in reproductive physiology of pigs, which is, I think, the only one like that in the world. And my family and I, three kids, my wife, a dog, moved from England. So they basically sold everything up in England and came out here to Edmonton in 1988. Coming here with, again, knowing nobody, really never having worked very closely with the industry and then being able to rub shoulders with Frank for 10 or so years when he was still at U of A, it was quite extraordinary. I mean, a bundle of energy, 10 ideas a day, and I think we became a great team. There was Frank Ahern, myself, John Fedes, uh, Willem Sauer, so two nutritionists, a, a behavior environmental guy, uh, and myself, and I was brought, I guess, specifically to work in the area of sort of reproduction and breeding management. I inherited from Frank, really, the leadership of the unit. So on a sort of week-to-week, month-to-month basis, I work with the manager here, Jay Willis, and between us, and largely Jay, as he got experienced, sort of really runs the unit. But uh, as, as the academic responsible, if you like, you have responsibility for financial management, which the way the industry has been has been a massive issue for us. So ever since I've been here, we've had a big issue about what, what sort of pigs do we have. And if we went through the unit here historically as well as now, you would see that we have, for instance, very few finishing pigs. And so that's driven a lot of what we've done and it, it's driven a lot of how we built this facility. So it's really built as a very intensive facility. It really takes pigs to weaning. We can take about 80 pigs to market weight and, and that was a real focus. Here. So this facility, which is called the Pig Science Centre, was actually driven initially by the Prairie Swine Centre when they built their new Elsto barn in the attic space there they built a walkway for the public to go through and all of these displays were developed for that facility. So when we developed this facility, the question was, well, we're not going to walk down the barn looking through windows, so what can we do in this facility? And the port board actually put an extra $60,000 on top of the budget to basically add this on the end. So the windows behind us looking into one of the firing rooms the windows around the corner looking into our walking gestation facility are actually biosecure because we're outside the facility. The rest is labs. We have, on the, again, the front end, on the front end of the showers, we have some very, very high-tech, uh, in our case, reproduction labs for semen analysis and for working with embryos. So you're talking like uh, nearly a million dollars of scientific equipment within a pig barn and a lot of our work we do right on site here with that sort of stuff. So the surgery and those labs are where a lot of the actual hands-on work is done with animals and sperm and eggs and embryos is all done right on this site. All of this was massively supported by the industry through Alberta Port. So this was about a $5.2 million budget, a million of which came from Alberta Port to give you some idea of their involvement. The great thing about that was it shows the rapport that did exist, that they believed in research, they believed in education. And so you can imagine coming halfway around the world and then being in the middle of that sort of environment was absolutely phenomenal. It just, it's, it's just like going into a candy shop and these guys were always with us, always supportive and it's really carried on that way. So I've been very fortunate over the years to get really very involved with industry, not only in Canada and Alberta, but particularly in the Midwest where there's a lot of interest in what we do. 
So we run some pretty big programs off-site. We're still doing that. In fact, we're doing more of those now than we ever did, running big, big projects off-site. Uh, to try and apply some of the, the science we've done to the industry and that's been really exciting. In the area we work in of sort of intensive breeding management and reproduction and genetic selection for breeding quality, that is still a very critical part of the Canadian industry. Now in terms of total pigs produced, it's a small part but I think it's a very vital part. I train something like 52 graduate students now and they're all over the world literally and that's a tremendous part of what we do. If you go into my contact list on my laptop and you scroll through this list of names, I mean hundreds and hundreds of people I've got to know well across the industry. Um, and those are, you know, things I value. Um, the science is what gets me there, but those relationships and working with them uh, have been a tremendous thing to be able to do. It's absolutely amazing to have, to be able to sit here and, and know what it represents. And, and certainly for the family, I mean, you talk about what's in it for the family. I know the impact it has on them is extraordinary. The, the, the old man is up there getting some sort of recognition and that has tremendous meaning for them. Uh, probably more, all, almost, than it does for me, to, for them to realise that we've done something a bit special by coming here. And I really appreciate that.